Hi, my laptop of seven years just went vamoose. I bet it had a fine print saying only good for the period of Obama's presidency. Gonna miss them both. It was the only computer I had for so long. Please respond or I'll get rid of you. Well, yeah, I had a desktop a while back, but I swear it was only a printer server and it meant nothing more. And now with the laptop gone, I can't even edit this video. So I'll have to fix it. You see, it's only half dead. The issue is that the cooling fan doesn't turn at all. The CPU heats up after a couple of minutes and shuts down. So I have to dissect it. Here I'm jumping forward to an important point and I'll jump back later. I have opened my laptop and the problem was something I totally ignored although the signs were obvious. My laptop has been overheating and shutting down for a while now and I blamed it on summer and global warming. Where in fact the air channel was totally blocked with dust and lint and sh**. Eventually the fan heated up so much it died. The cooling fan constantly sucks dust in and over years the air channel will block. Now you don't need to dissect your laptop to clean it. I have invented a method called vacuper involving a vacuum cleaner and a piece of paper. Patent pending. In a laptop there is usually one fan that sucks the air in from the bottom and pushes it out from the side. So you have to suck the air backwards to get the crap out. But the vacuum cleaner hole is usually smaller than the intake of the fan and doesn't seal and suck well. Take a piece of paper and make a hole in it smaller than the hole of the vacuum cleaner. Put the vacuum cleaner hose on the paper on the intake of the fan and turn the vacuum on. The paper will create a very good seal. Do this for a minute or two and the air path is cleaned. When you see your computer is working kind of glitchy or intermittent or shuts down randomly, the CPU might be overheating and need cleaning. Now back to the beginning. Welcome back. Now to open your laptop, first you have to remove the power cord and the battery. Release the magazine and pull the slide a couple of times to make sure there is no battery left in the battle. Mm. Now you open the rim. I think I have to open some screws, hopefully as little as possible. Here is the fan. You have to disconnect like 100 connectors to get to it. Some of them like this one you just pull out carefully. And the other ones like this have a locking mechanism that you have to open first and then pull out the flat cable. If you think you can get away with not opening one screw you are wrong. All the hundred must go. On the ground. Every laptop can have a different problem, but in many cases the monitor, camera or microphone malfunction and it's usually because of the signal cable that runs through the monitor hinge. It can break easily as it's constantly under stress. And trust me I've tried, you cannot reliably fix this cable unless you never close your monitor. You better buy a new cable or computer. In some other cases your connectors like USB could have been broken off the board and usually you can solder them back on the board. And here is the cooling system responsible for cooling the system. Here I took the fan out and accidentally broke two of its blades. It's a 5 volt fan so I'll connect it to my 5 volt supply. And it doesn't turn so fortunately the problem is the fan not the motherboard. Let's tear it apart. These blades are super fragile. You can see here that this is the magnet in the rotor and these are the electromagnets that turn the fan. And the control circuit is somewhere under that PCBA. Never mind, it's broken anyways. Well, I fixed it. Even I am often surprised by the extent of my genius. I think a combination of heat and vibration over years broke a trace or wire in the fan and wiggling it reconnected that broken trace. I guess now I'll put it back. It might work for another year, or it may fail tomorrow. But the blades are broken. If I break two opposite blades, then it will balance. Wrong too. There you go. Good as new. But then it won't cool well. It might work though. But what if it shorts the motherboard and kills it? Ah, fine. The part number of the fan is written on its label. And fortunately eBay has mine for $8 and it will be delivered in a month? What well, I can't live without a computer for a month? What am I, a savage? If you hadn't wasted your laptop on your stupid videos, it wouldn't die! What are you talking about? I have a lot of viewers and good fans! Why won't you shove one of your fans in your laptop and fix it? <laughs> You're good! Shut up! I know what to do. I'll first put the laptop together, somehow. Oh, I know, I recorded everything, so I'll just retrace my steps. <laughs> and 
and done. There is usually some excess screws that you can vacuum. Now to make my laptop work while I'm waiting for my new fan to come in, I externally attach a 12 volt fan to it, place it on the intake with the fan blowing towards the laptop and I hot glue it in place. And I power it from my trusty power supply and voila, good as new. Now to improve the airflow, it's better to raise the laptop. Don't put your hand in a running fan. Give away time. Every day, millions of wires are victims of abuse. So everyone should have a soldering station. And thanks to circuit specialists, I'm gonna give away 10 soldering stations to my patrons at patreon.com. It's a hint, please become my patron or else you won't win the giveaway. And my channel won't grow.